What's up everyone, Art at Patience Metal Fab, and I just got onto the shop to start filming a new episode on the Papa Smurf Camaro ZL1 build. If you guys haven't caught up with the other episodes, I'm gonna put a link up here so you can watch them all. And notice that in the last video, I ended things by saying that we're gonna be doing some suspension upgrades to this car. After all, this is a track car, so it deserves track car suspension. With that, we got this big box from Tractive. I'm not exactly sure what's in here. I assume it's coilovers. It's very heavy. But what I'm gonna do is get Gary down here. We're gonna unbox it, then figure out what's all in here. I'm sure you guys guessed by now, but I was correct. It is a set of coilovers. I do have a little bit of a question for Gary, uh, namely why we need a wiring kit for coilovers. Uh, this is a company that I've never personally used, Tractive. They're from the Netherlands, but apparently they're really a big name in racing. Yep. Um, so they actually come out of like the enduro motorcycle stuff with active suspension. And that's what makes these so cool is that you can adjust these things for, um, the track for your roll, pitch, damping. What they actually do on this is they've got something that they call their dynamic damping valve. And to get a little technical, uh, reacts within six to 10 milliseconds between full soft to full hard. So they use a yaw rate sensor in the car to monitor roll, pitch, yaw, and then based on the way you have it set through the little touch screen, they actively control damping, which means that what you traditionally did with things like sway bars and spring rates, you're now able to do in a variable manner on the track. I wanna get a little up close and personal with these things, starting with the camber plates up top. These are pretty standard, but they have a ton of adjustability, as you can see. And then moving down, I see two sets of springs. So why is Tractive chosen to do this? So you see these in a lot of coilovers that are real high end. These are what you'd call a helper spring. This will be completely compressed when the car's on the ground. It's pretty much to take up space so when the suspension winds up in a droop scenario, this spring doesn't wind up flopping around on there, wind up out of position or whatever it may be. Like a lot of coilover companies, these are a semi-modular system, meaning the actual application piece that bolts to the spindle is something that threads onto the body. They've also got the cool little collar for an adjustable height on your sway bar itself. Uh, this is pretty standard issue, height adjustment, but really these things come pretty much dialed and ready to go straight in the car. Guys over Tractive said we really shouldn't have to do much adjustment height-wise, maybe some little tweaking for aero you might have on the car or wheel size, but for the most part, these things are ready to go right out of the box. So far, there's not a ton of surprises up here. This pretty much looks like a standard high quality coilover, but really where all the magic is, is right in there. You can see a little electronic cord with a connector coming out. So I assume that's what the harness connects to. What is the whole deal behind this? So, you know, this is nothing super new. There's plenty of cars that actually have electronic suspensions on them. The one LE actually does, in fact. Um, Tractive actually is the OEM manufacturer for the Pagani, which is another one that has it. But what you get when you put this in an aftermarket scenario is you get a little more adjustability. The factory car here gives you three modes, street, sport, and track, right? So that's one cool thing about these. You can maintain that flexibility. So if you take this thing, if you have a car that you don't dedicate to the track, you wanna drive it on the street, you can still get a comfortable ride out of these. Then go to the track, turn them to kill mode, go to town. Or in this case, what's really cool about this is this is a perfect application for this customer. This would be replaced on a conventional racing coilover with a series of knobs and adjustments. In this case, these do it for you. You basically get to set a roll and a pitch profile through this. So you have compression, you have compression adjustment directly and then you can actually set your roll and pitch profiles. So as you begin to feel what you like on the car, especially on like a test and tune day, you can go around the lap once and then change it live in real time in the car and run around again. Really lets you dial the car in for what your driving style likes and what's comfortable for you. 
From the sounds of it, these are super intuitive, so good for an amateur racer like Nick, but from what you've told me, this is kind of a pro setup too. There's plenty of pro teams running these. Yeah, the Brumos Porsche actually just set the world record up Pikes Peak on a set of these without sway bars because of the ability to control roll dynamically on the track, so they work. That's awesome. Well, it's got me excited to see these on the car. We obviously have to bolt these in and then also do some wiring work, which I don't say often when it comes to a coilover install. So I think we should get to it and see how they go on. Gary is back from the track weekend with the Camaro, and we also got the wing pieces that we were waiting on. So I figured we'd do a little recap of how the weekend went, and then get to the install on these, a little uh, before and after on what you guys had to make do with. So how did the weekend go? Weekend went great. Uh, Nick did well, got his license, car wound up on a podium. Um, it did everything you needed to do. Tractive stuff worked great. Uh, it's a little different than dialing in a conventional set of like three ways, so we're kind of still learning how to make that system work, but all in all, uh, great weekend. It's always nice to know that you have a successful weekend out at the track, especially when you kind of have to make do. You guys saw in uh, some of the footage that we were making these. Can you describe what you had to do to accomplish that and then uh, what the major difference is between these two pieces? Yeah, you remember the old like three-dimensional puzzles you had as a little kid? That's basically what we had to do. So we took the design of these and turned them into a multi-layer piece that we could cut out on the plasma table last minute and weld it together. The benefit to the billet pieces is not only do they look better, but they're actually lighter. They're about a pound and a half lighter, which tells you how much weld went into those. And then the actual swan neck wing mount pieces are considerably lighter because they're not layered. Uh, they're also a lot stronger than uh, sheet metal pieces that are welded together. So all in all, the system's better. I mean, these are such a cool design. It's almost a shame that they're a one-off piece. Or what do we have planned for these? Well, if you followed the red Camaro that we built, that's kind of where this design originally came from. We've wanted to be able to uh, do it in a little more of a repeatable way. So that's kind of when we approached this one, we had that mentality of being able to do this in a way that's more repeatable. Moving forward, we may actually make these out of two pieces where the base comes off and then the base can be adapted. All you have to do is make different bases for different applications to match the trunk lid. And then the uprights are pretty straightforward and it's relatively low level of fabrication required. A Little bit of cutting, some MIG welding, and you can drop those things in and mount this on your own car. You could even just send us the spacing you need and we could adapt it to almost any car. 
With that, I think Andrew's gonna be ready to install these. We're gonna do a little bit of fine tuning on this car, and then we've got just a few days to get it wrapped up, get it on the trailer and out to the track. So I think that's how we're gonna end this episode and then make the next one all about the test and tune track day up at Brainerd.